Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melder Production, and today I'm going to go over how to make a uh, higher gain amp. Before I went over, you know, a medium gain distortion, but today I'll show you how you can make one that's a little bit higher gain. And there's many ways to do it, but today I want to focus on how you can do it using a, like a multi-band approach. So we're going to start with something like this. This is very similar to what I showed you in the uh, medium gain video. It just sounds like this. So I have new strings on here, so if they drift out of tune, I, I apologize. But I want to take this and make it more similar to something like this. So, you see here, this is much more uh, gainy, and uh, we'll show you how you can move this into that realm. Although not exactly. Uh, I don't really want to make this like a, a tone tutorial, so I'm not going to try to make this as polished and as nice as it could be. Unfortunately, I'll maybe do that in a different video, but I do want to show you the basics on how to do this and how you can manipulate some of the high gain sounds. So if we start here, we see we have three stages. Um, this is in beta, but the next version will have this in uh, with nine stages. You see here before, previously it only had six, but it's gonna you know expand with three more, which is nice. Um, we have everything set up here with a gain, bass, and treble, uh, middle. If you don't know how to do that, check out the medium gain video. I'll show you how to do all that in there. And you see here we have this, the gain's up pretty high. I have it on clip two. In here, I just have two more stages on clip three and soft two. You can move that up if you want more distortion at the end here. But what I really want to show is how to, you know, gain this up. Here, it's pretty light. Now, of course, if I move the gain up like this, that's, you know, it's getting there, but it's still not really enough. What we can do is one way you can just say like, oh, just add more gain stages. But really, we don't want to just add more. So like we have this one and this one is make it a lot louder. But I'll show you a different way. I think that's a little bit better. So. Let's start with this, put it on clip three, and then we're gonna use the high pass filter. And there's a few ways we can do this, but actually, yeah, we'll use the high pass filter here. We'll move this up to around like 850. Now you can choose any frequency value you want for this high pass filter, but I think around like that mm, 600 to 1000 region is good. It's a good split for me. So if I move this up to 850, and it's on 12, uh, 12 decibels per octave, and it's on 0.5 for the Q. Listen to it now, it sounds like this. Now you're probably thinking like, what are you doing? <laughs> this sounds terrible, but just wait. And I'm gonna do something similar to this one. Stage three, set it to clip three here. And I'll do the same thing, except this time I'm gonna use a low pass filter and set it to the exact same value. Make sure this is 850. Or if you use 600 on the other one, use 600 on this one. The same thing with 12 decibels per octave and 50. Let's listen to this. Both of these sound terrible. If you put them together, they sound terrible together. We don't want that. We want them to be in parallel. So you see this button? We're going to use this. So this will uh, set the stage that's behind it in parallel to it. So this is before, after. So now we're hearing both of them together. One problem with this is if you know about like high pass and low pass filters, you know they don't you know cut off exactly at 850. It's gonna gradually drop off. So that means in the middle somewhere, you're going to get like a buildup of frequencies. So what we can do to get rid of that is flip the phase of one of them. And that way those uh, frequencies that are overlapping will cancel each other out. Now you see here, we have this button. This is the flip phase. You can use either one, just don't do both. So this is before, this is after. There you go. From here, there's other things we can do. You can mess with this, the all pass filter, and that will change uh, you know, how some of the things are delayed. So if I set it here at 850, this is before. That makes a difference, and if you like that, of course you can keep it, but uh, I think I might you know, turn that off. Also, if you think, ah, it's good, but it's too much, try adjusting the Q. So here it is normally in the middle at 0.5. So 
So what that does is it basically just adjusts the phase of certain frequencies. So it, it sounds like, hey, you know, it's EQing it somehow, but it's actually not. It's just making some of the phases faster or slower. Um, but anyways, you can mess with that if you wanted. Uh, for this, I'm just going to leave it off just for my own reasons, but feel free to adjust that if you like. Now, it has a little bit more game, but you're probably thinking like, eh, it's not that much more. What we're going to do here is, one, I probably want to get rid of some of the bass here because it seems a little bit bassy to me. So I'll just take this high pass filter here and just move it up a little bit. I don't want to do too much, maybe around here or so, drop the cue. And of course, set this to taste. So you think, oh, no, that's too much. I can set it down here. One thing to remember is when you're doing like higher gain, those low frequencies are going to fart out if you have too much of them. So you wonder like, why is this sound more like a, like a fuzz pedal than, you know, the distortion you'd normally hear out of a high gain amp? That's probably the reason. You probably need to cut some of the lows. Uh, and of course, do this to taste. Uh, if you're, you know, cutting them and you find out later like, ah, this doesn't sound good, it, you know, sounds anemic, I'll show you how you can add that bass in later that won't make it fart out like that. But let's talk about gaining this up now. So the easiest way is just to turn the gains up here. So I have this, let's set this at, let's say, negative 12 at first for both of these. And that's just going to bring the volume down because I'm going to turn the gain in up to distort it. So let's try like 15 and 15 so you see that's like quite a bit more gainy uh, another way is if you don't want to keep adjusting both of these like make it like 20 20 etc you can adjust the gain out that's going into them from here so if i make this negative 15 <laughs> Now I think we're getting into like higher gain territory. I still haven't adjusted the controls gain. So this is a 50% and like, oh, wow, that's quite a bit more. So if both of them are off. See, we're getting quite a bit more gain. And you can do more of this if you want also uh, the same way. And of course, you can adjust the analog, which will add in, uh, was it even harmonics, I believe? I should check that just to make sure. It is even harmonics. I always get confused which one is even, which one is uh, odd. Controls the amount of even harmonics. Yeah, I was right. So, from here, we can do other things also. So, if I think I want even more, I can go into stage four and add this. So, this is maybe clip two. <laughs> And I can gain that up as well if I want. Let's see, I'll set this maybe negative five, set this around eight. Okay. So for me, that sounds like a good amount of gain. Of course, adjust this however you like. Uh, you can adjust the high pass filter if you want, if you think like, oh, you know, too flubby or something like that. But uh, let's talk about some other stuff. It's getting a little bit hissy now and there's too much high end. So one thing we can do is we can adjust the low pass filter here. You can use 6 decibels per octave, 12 decibels per octave, or 24, whatever you want. I'm going to use 12 here and we can start bringing this down. I don't want to actually change the guitar sound too much, but I do want to cut out some of the high end that we're really not using. And it'll build up over the distortion stages, so cutting it out, uh, you know, earlier in this distortion stages can sometimes help, although if you do too much, it will alter the sound. Try 6,000. So you can see that does change it, so listen closely. 6,000, off. Okay. And I can do that at uh, earlier stages too, so, okay. Which one? Ah, this one. So I can make this 6,000 also. Or I could even do it back here. There we go, I have that, and for the most part, that's what I want. Other ways we can actually manipulate the sound is if you watched my previous video on the saturator 
making it like a general saturator and M turbo amp, I talk about using frequency selective distortion. And that means just boosting or cutting uh, certain frequencies in here to change the sound. So if we have stage four here, let's say 400 uh, hertz. Let's say I drop this by six decibels. Let's listen to this. Off. It's much thicker. I can do it more. I can exaggerate it more like this. Here's getting really anemic, but then if I add some. No, that makes it a little bit thicker if that's what you want. And so you can just adjust that however you feel fit. I actually usually do like a big cut, like maybe negative 10 or something, and then kind of sweep it around. Change the frequency. Oh, really anemic. Not good. And you can see how it alters the sound. So you can find one you think like, okay, it actually sounds good if I cut this there, but maybe that's too much. So instead of negative 10, maybe do like negative five or negative six or something like this. Well, I cut this out here. And I can do the same thing boosting it. So if I think, ah, oh, I want like a little bit more pick attack. So maybe around this 2000 region. Boost. Maybe. Uh, let me move it up a little bit higher. So I think, okay, that's kind of good. I like that gives it a little bit more presence if I want that and of course set this however you like whatever sounds good to you and that's how you can change the shape of the distortion the earlier in the distortion stages you change it the uh, more it will actually shape the distortion if you get to the later stages it's almost like an EQ and you're not going to, not going to uh, affect the overall sound quite as much. Well, you will affect the sound, but you won't change the distortion uh, characteristics. So that's something to keep in mind. You can also do it at the very beginning in the input EQ if you prefer that. So mess around with it in different positions and you'll kind of figure it out. And one last thing is if you think, okay, this is pretty good, but like it's a little bit too anemic. And if I start boosting it in here, it's going to start you know farting out. You can go to the output EQ and change that. So let's see here. I'll show it first off. Got some bad playing there. So you can hear it's the same basic tone, it just has much more bass to it. So Inside the distortion stage, it will actually kind of change the shape of it. Whereas if you just want, uh, uh, you know, like if you put like an EQ or a pedal or something afterwards, that's what this is for. So you can kind of shape that last bit. Whereas if you want to change the feel or the, uh, I don't know, the amount it distorts at a certain frequency, try to change it inside the distortion, distortion stage. Ugh, sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied. Hopefully this goes over some of the things... Uh, or how to shape a uh, higher gain distortion. Uh, it's kind of lots of an art to it, but this will give you some ideas. And of course, I tried to show you how you can do it from scratch, but you don't actually have to do that. You can you know, take one of the other uh, amps you already see and use one of those as a template. Uh, there's some other things you can do. I'll show you very briefly at the end here. You can take this stage that are in parallel, like this, stage two and three, and you might want to use this for kind of like testing purposes to balance it out. I'll call this control balance here. And let's say make this negative let's say, what do I want? 16. And then maybe was it negative eight or so? And use the same values here and invert this one. And what this control will do is it will allow us to shift these, which controls the amount of high end or low end like this.
And with this, you can just kind of find the place it sounds good. We're like, oh, I like it a little bit more bassy for this amp. And then you can just erase this control and the controls will be set for you. Or you can do the opposite way. And that way you can kind of make your own sound and you don't have to mess with everything uh, else with the balance. This is an easy way to do that. And then, you know, afterwards you can tweak it with the output EQ if you find that that helps you. And then instead of having this on there, you can put this on here if you want or just throw it away. Whatever you want. Hopefully this gave you some ideas of things you can do. I didn't try to make the perfect high gain sound, but uh, you can experiment and come up with something that you really like yourself. Uh, I'll try to show you some other you know, cool tricks and things in the future, but if you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave any comments down below, and check out all the other plugins at MelderProduction.com. Until next time, see you.